What's going on, A Push Peeps? We have Key Concept 8.2 for you. This is the revised edition, the most up to date edition of the A Push curriculum you will find. You know what time it is. It's shout out time. We have to give shout outs to Mr. Martin's class in Malaysia. This is so cool to me that somebody in Malaysia is watching. So thank you, Mr. Petty's class in Massachusetts, Ms. McFarland's class in Washington, and Ms. Taft's class from Central High School. Thank you guys so very much i appreciate it and best of luck in may you will do great all right key concept 8.2 states new movements for civil rights and liberal efforts to expand the role of government generated a range of political and cultural responses so it's a big idea questions you should be able to answer what were some examples of successes during the civil rights movement and how did the federal government contribute to this how did awareness for groups such as Latinos, American Indians, Asian Americans, women, and gays and lesbians change during this time? And why were some people on the left and the right assailing liberalism? All right, Roman numeral one states, seeking to fulfill Reconstruction era promises, civil rights activists and political leaders achieved some legal and political successes in ending segregation, although the progress toward equality was slow and halting. So after World War II, civil rights activists are going to use a variety of strategies to challenge racial segregation. Be familiar with the different types of strategies. This could be a great short answer question. So there were legal challenges. An example of a case is Brown versus the Board of Education, which was led by an attorney for the NAACP, Thurgood Marshall, who became a future Supreme Court justice. And there is Justice Marshall. You also have direct action, people like Fannie Lou Hamer, and Freedom Summer, in which they sought to increase the number of African Americans registered to vote in Mississippi. And of course, you have nonviolent protest tactics used by people like Martin Luther King in the Montgomery bus boycott. Here's Rosa Parks the day that she was arrested. And also sit ins that began in Greensboro, North Carolina, and then inspired other sit ins across the country and other ins, such as bowl ins and wade ins and kneel-ins at churches, you name it, there were inns all across the country trying to get rid of segregation. So all three branches help promote greater racial justice. In the executive branch, you see Harry Truman's Executive Order 9981 that desegregated the U.S. military in 1948. And the first war that the U.S. fought in with desegregated troops was the Korean War. For the judicial branch, you have Brown versus the Board of Education, which I briefly just mentioned. This ruled that segregation was inherently unequal, and this overturned the disastrous court case Plessy versus Ferguson from 1896. So if you're writing an essay about the civil rights movement, you mentioned Brown versus the Board of Education, your synthesis point could be Plessy versus Ferguson. And you also have the legislative branch promoting greater racial justice by the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This was part of LBJ's Great Society. This was His Great Society was an extension of the New Deal, and it focused on civil rights. And what the Civil Rights Act of 1964 does, and definitely know it's because it's specifically mentioned in the new curriculum, makes discrimination in the workplace illegal, and it guarantees equal access to public accommodation. So no longer could places discriminate based on race. White resistance was slow at efforts at desegregation. For instance, massive resistance was, a, was an idea in the South that Southern schools would rather shut down before desegregating. So you would see, so schools in the South actually did close instead of being forced to desegregate. The Southern Manifesto was written by 101 congressmen that believed the Supreme Court overstepped its power in Brown versus the Board of Education. They looked at the 14th Amendment, which the Supreme Court cited in Brown versus Board, and they said nowhere in the 14th Amendment was segregation mentioned. So many Southern congressmen tried to resist desegregation. And of course, probably the most well-known example is the Little Rock Nine. This is when Governor Orville Faubus of Arkansas, he refused to integrate schools, and then President Eisenhower nationalized the troops to enforce the integration of nine African-American students at Little Rock High School. Post-1965, due to thing, due to riots in cities and an increased involvement in Vietnam, which many African-Americans protested, there were debates that emerged among activists over tactics and philosophies. So Martin Luther King, he's still going to urge nonviolence, but many urban protesters, especially those living in the North, are going to become more frustrated. And we see the emergence of the Black Panther Party. They advocated armed self-defense to use violence if necessary to protect themselves. All right, let's take a look at Roman numeral two. It says, responding to social conditions in the African-American civil rights movement, 
A variety of movements emerged that focused on issues of identity, social justice, and the environment. So we have feminists and gay and lesbian activists. They called for legal, economic, and social equality. And this will be an extension of the civil rights movement. So definitely know Betty Friedan, very famous author. She wrote a book called The Feminine Mystique. And she argued that many housewives, especially suburban housewives, were not happy and felt they lived unfulfilled lives because many of them were, were confined to home and raising children and they wanted more out of life is what she found. Gloria Steinman, she, she was and is a very influential feminist. She helped create the National Women's Political Caucus and this supports women that seek to be involved in politics and she is the stepmother of one of my favorite actors, Christian bail you think he's going around like where's gloria that was my batman impression we see calls for social and economic equality for gays and lesbians as well in 1969 we have the stonewall riots in new york city and this is the birth of the gay rights movement which riots occurred outside of the stonewall in a very popular gay and lesbian establishment where many customers were arrested by police simply for being gay so groups that demanded social and economic equality and to redress past grievances included. So we see this movement again going beyond just the civil rights movement. We see Latinos led by Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers. He led a great picker strike to bring attention to the plight of Mexican-American workers. He also went on a hunger strike for like 28 days, I believe, and he met with presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy in 1968. American Indians, whether it's the Indians of all tribes or the American Indian movement, they use protests to bring attention to the struggles of Native Americans. And the IAT took over Alcatraz Island in 1969. And Asian Americans saw California overturning its alien land law, which forbade Japanese immigrants from owning land. So other minority groups are getting more equality during this time as well. Although it appeared there was overall influence, if you look at especially the 1950s, you believe that many people were living affluent lives. Poverty was a national issue and many and people wanted to reform this. So we have Michael Harrington, a very influential journalist. He writes a book called The Other American. This is going to help influence Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society program to help out America. And he argued in his book that 25% of the nation and 40% of African Americans were living in poverty and Native Americans were the hardest hit group. So he said, although there appears to be a lot of affluence in the country, there really is not. Okay, so some environmental problems and accidents occur, especially in the 1970s. In the 1960s, Rachel Carson wrote a very famous influential book called Silent Spring, in which she warned about the dangers of pesticide, especially in the water system. And this helped inspire the Environmental Protection Agency and also the Clean Air Act. And the Environmental Protection Agency was created under President Nixon's administration. And the purpose of these was to help protect the environment and human health. Then in the 1970s, you have two very bad disasters, environmental disasters. One is Love Canal, New York, right by Niagara Falls, not too far from where I live. And the other is Three Mile Island, a nuclear power plant disaster in Pennsylvania. And this led to the government getting involved in passing legislation to help out these communities. Please, please, please know the causes and impacts of the environmental movement. This is a great potential short answer question. Roman numeral three says liberalism influenced post-war politics and court decisions, but it came under increasing attack from the left as well as from a resurgent conservative movement or the right. So question, what the heck is liberalism? Well, it's limiting communism abroad, and it's also the belief in the power of the government to achieve goals at all. Home. And this will reach its zenith or its highest point in the mid 60s under LBJ with the Great Society. So, what is the Great Society? Well, it sought to use the federal power to end racial discrimination. I want you to think it's a continuation of the New Deal, but there's civil rights. And a lot of times, LBJ, this guy here on the left, he used his stature, he was a tall president, about 6'3", 6'4", to intimidate people, what's known as the Johnson treatment. This poor guy's getting the Johnson treatment. Look at all this space over here. Look how close he is to this dude's grill. That's how he got things done. If you want to know more about the Johnson treatment, see my video, The Presidency of LBJ. It is in the description. So as I mentioned earlier, Civil Rights Act of 1964, this banned discrimination in public facilities. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, this eliminated literacy tests, and the federal government could register voters in areas in which minorities were not registered to vote. And then we have the 24th Amendment that eliminated poll taxes. So finally, with the Voting Rights Act 
of 1965 and the 24th Amendment, the 15th Amendment from Reconstruction, which guaranteed suffrage to all males, finally comes to fruition. So there's another synthesis connection for you. The Great Society also sought to eliminate poverty and address other social issues. You have the Head Start program, which is early childhood education, and the cabinet position of housing and urban development, which promoted housing in cities. Food stamps, Medicare, and Medicaid were also part of the Great Society. And LBJ was a former teacher, so education was important to him. Billions of dollars were provided for primary and secondary education. Now, the Supreme Court also made several decisions that expanded democracy and individual freedoms. For example, Miranda versus Arizona, if you are arrested, you have to be read your Miranda rights. Can you say them? Say them right now. Do you know it? No, it's not. You have the right to be an attorney. And Griswold versus Connecticut, this struck down a law forbidding contraception. And this set the precedent that the Constitution established a right to privacy, and that will be used in later years in Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion. All right, the 1960s. Conservatives began to challenge liberal laws, court decisions, and a perceived moral culture decline. So we see a rise of conservatism or the rise of the right. And conservatives hope to limit the role of the federal government, go away from this large government involvement under the Great Society. They want to be more assertive with foreign policy as well. Now, Barry Goldwater, he's going to run against LBJ in 1964 for election. Here is Barry. He was much more militant than LBJ and he called for a smaller government. Now do you recognize this dude to his left here giving a speech? That is Ronald Reagan. He gave a very famous speech called A Time for Choosing which really launched Ronald Reagan's political career and a lot of Reagan's conservative ideas can really be traced back to Barry Goldwater. There's another potential synthesis point for you. All right, so groups on the left assailed liberals because, or attacked liberals because they didn't think they went far enough, especially when it came to racial and economic issues. So the Black Panthers, as I mentioned earlier, they urged arming of African Americans for self-defense, and they also created free breakfast programs in urban areas for children going to school. They realized the importance of breakfast for young children. Liberals pursued immoral policies abroad, they also argued, especially the Vietnam War when LBJ got the U.S. involved in the Vietnam War. So an example of this is the Students for a Democratic Society. They protested the Vietnam War as the U.S. increased involvement, and they criticized the gap between the rich and the poor. And they inspired march-ins, sit-ins, and teach-ins. Now we'll see, especially in the 1970s, public trust in government is going to drastically decrease. And this will happen due to several reasons. Again, another great potential short answer question. We see economic challenges, things like stagflation of the 1970s. Stagflation, very important term to know. It's high, uninfla high inflation and high unemployment. It is an economic nightmare. There are also political scandals, such as the Watergate scandal, which led to Nixon resigning the first president in U.S. history to resign, and only one, and also foreign policy crises, things like the oil embargo of 1973, which saw gas stations across the country have high gas prices or even run out of gas. The Vietnam War was another issue that, last, that lasted many years, and the Iran hostage crisis of 1979 under President Carter's administration, he was unable to rescue the hostages from the U.S. Embassy in Iran. All right, so conservatives and liberals are going to clash over the following issues. One, social and cultural issues. So we'll see changes to the American family. In the 1970s in particular, we'll see divorce rates increase, more women are working outside the home, and that challenged the traditional family idea of the 1950s. Power of the federal government will be another issue. Conservatives are going to want a smaller government. They'll be against things like the Great Society, and this is true even to today. Conservatives call for smaller government. Race will be an issue. The Supreme Court case Bach versus the University of California. The Supreme Court upheld affirmative action. However, it ruled that quotas were not allowed. So somebody's race could be a factor in admitting somebody into college, but there, the use of quotas or setting aside a certain amount of spots for somebody based on their race is not allowed is what the Supreme Court said. Phyllis Schlafly, she was a critic of the ERA or the Equal Rights Amendment. This was an amendment to the Constitution that came close to passing but did not pass. She argued that the ERA would take away certain benefits for women, and her campaign helped lead to the defeat of the ERA. It came about three or four states shy of being ratified, if I remember correctly. All right, so let's finish up with some test tips for multiple choice and short answer. Definitely no examples of strategies used by civil rights activists, whether it's direct action, legal action, and nonviolent protest. 
how all three branches contributed to the civil rights movement. These two things sound like a great short answer question to me. So make sure you are familiar with them. Great society, you pretty much need to know everything about it. Criticisms of liberalism on the left and the right. What were criticisms from each side? And for essays and DBQs, definitely be able to compare and contrast the civil rights movement with earlier time periods, for example, from the 1890s to the 1920s with people like Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, etc. Compare and contrast them with the 1950s and 1960s civil rights movement. And also comparing the women's rights movement with earlier time periods. For instance, the 1840s with the Seneca Falls Convention or the 1920s with flappers as well. All right, guys, look forward to seeing you back here for Key Concept 8.3. Only four videos left. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Best of luck on all your exams, especially the one in May. You will do great and have a good day.